So this is the final video in the series of three videos for the FPV setup that I'm building for my friend. And uh, this time we're looking at the transmitter antenna and we're going to be building a 5.8 gigahertz cloverleaf antenna like this one here. This one is actually one I've just um, made up to get an idea of the size because he actually wants a cover to go over it as well to protect it uh, in case he crashes or anything like that. And uh, also I've made this up on some LMR cable just to, and what I did I weighed it just to get an idea of the weight but um, I'm not going to use uh, LMR because it's just too heavy uh, by the time we put the uh, cover on, the case on, etc. So again we're going to be using one of these pigtails again, I'm going to be cutting it off now. He actually wants um, about 30 millimeters leaving on to connect to his uh, transmitter here and the antenna on uh, the end of that. So this is actually cut to 30 millimeters. So I've got 30 millimeters there, and I've got 10 millimeters with the spacer from the uh, center signal element of the coaxial cable to the outer sheaf, and I'll probably leave myself another. 10 15 mil to play with on here as well, so I'll be cutting it off around here. So, I'm going to be using some uh, copper wire just like I used in the last two videos, just household electrical cable, solid core, and stripped it off. I believe this is around 21 SW or 20 SW. Um, this stuff here is actually 18 SW. This is um, some that I bought. But uh, that's probably about as thick as I go when I'm making antennas in the 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz range. I don't like using any thicker. Use any thicker, and what tends to happen is it extends its broadband range. So what that means is it can get interference from other frequencies because uh, you're actually extending the uh, range of what it can pick up and uh, it'll be getting uh, some interference for some uh, other frequencies as well just depends what's around you when you're using one of these so to actually protect the clover leaf the actual antenna part of this I've uh, looked at a few different things this is uh, a cap off um, an household aerosol polish I believe it was and uh, the clover leaf will fit in there just nicely you can cut that down about there just to save weight and uh, I've got this one here and again it will fit in there I can also trim this down a little bit as well and what I'm going to do I'm going to make a back cover and I've got some plastic here that I've got off some uh, old packaging just to make it a lot lighter I mean normally I use the uh, thicker stuff like I've used in the last couple of videos but uh, again I want to be uh, looking at keeping the weight down so probably going to have something like that and then we epoxy it down and then we can give it some paint. So the difference uh, with this video that uh, I'm going to show you is um, it's really really hard especially in the 5 gigahertz band the uh, measurements have got to be so spot on and they're so small and tiny it's really really difficult to um, get the measurements correct on each of these elements when you're measuring and uh, cutting even with uh, a pair of decent calipers it can be quite difficult but if you can measure once and cut off it makes it a lot easier so what I've got here I've got two straws and this longer one is cut off to 52.93 millimeters which is the exact size of uh, the um, element that we want for the cloverleaf antenna and here we've got a piece cut off at 13.23 millimeters and that's going to be our bends here so by measuring and cutting off once these straws we can then use these straws to uh, measure and cut off the rest of our elements so we're only actually measuring once and it makes it a lot easier and uh, we stand a better chance of getting it all nice and uniform okay so I brought the camera in at a slightly different angle so you can see exactly what I'm doing here and I've got my straw and what I'm going to do I'm going to cut off the three uh, elements first so what I do is use something um, same metal that you know is nice and flat and I'm using my ruler here so I've actually got the straw on there like that and I'm holding 
the copper wire down so here is exactly where we want to cut to get our length so come in with our wire cutters and using the flat piece on the bottom there you get them nice and flush with the straw and then you can snip it off and then this is exactly the correct measurement that we want so we've now got our three pieces of copper wire all cut off to the correct length and now we're going to put the bends in there to create the cloverleaf antenna so now we'll get our smaller piece of straw and do the same again but this time instead of cutting we're going to be using these needle nose pliers with a nice flat surface area there and again get it straight flush up to the straw and then hold it in place and then we can put a right angle bend in there like so and then we can do the same with the other side like so and then take it out and put the bend in just like that there so using that method it makes it really easy to get the measurements and cuts um, at the correct length and as you can see they're all exactly the same so now to get the actual bends on this uh, longer element here what I use is a sharpie and I start in the center and with my thumb I slowly work it round to create the bend just keep manipulating the copper wire bending it round the sharpie until you start to get the actual bend So you just keep going like that and then uh, do the other two as well. So before I start uh, constructing the actual antenna itself, because I'm putting a housing over this, I uh, actually want to put the base of that housing through here and then construct the uh, antenna on top here. Otherwise I won't be able to get it on because I only want it um, a hole in there as wide as the actual cable itself. So um, what I'm doing is I'm going to use this um, as the main uh, cover for the housing um, but I don't actually want all this depth so the easiest way to cut a nice straight line around something uh, circular like this is uh, find some tape and I've put the tape on here like this and I can follow that line to cut all the way around so uh, hopefully it should come out nice and level. So I've cut this down to size now and made the actual profile a lot thinner and uh, saving that little bit of weight as well so uh, what I'm going to be doing now is I've cut the coax to the length I want and I'm going to be um, cutting this back to expose the outer core and uh, the actual um, signal element center element of this and obviously I cut this out first so I can pop this through and uh, then work on that and then glue it up to the uh, top part of the case when we're finished. So I've cut back and exposed 20 millimeters of the outer copper braid here and I've done 20 millimeters because I want a 10 millimeter gap between the actual elements. So you can see on this one that uh, center core there is roughly 10 millimeters. Now I want to actually uh, separate the braids on this because I want to make three actual uh, pieces of the braid coming out at the sides here and then I'm going to tin them so it's a lot easier to take your time 
and actually separate the braid rather than trying to cut it you get a much uh, neater job at the end so once you've got it separated out then uh, you want to uh, grab little lumps of it and uh, basically you're trying to make three three strands coming off at that uh, base where you've cut once you've got it at this stage what I'm going to do now is measure off 10 millimeters of this um, center insulator and uh, expose the rest of the uh, center signal wire and uh, I'm going to tin these up. I'm not going to worry too much about the length at this moment in time I'm just going to tin them all up and the center one as well to get them ready to accept the um, actual elements of the clover leaf. So I've tinned up all of the wires here so what I'm going to do now is uh, put a little bit of tin on the legs of these clover leaves. So I'm going to snip these back probably leaving about three millimeters on each one of these legs. So I'm using my helping hands here to get it lined up so it's uh, held in place and I'm going to put a little bit of solder on there so we can connect this one up. So it's a really good idea to have some of these helping hands. It would be really, really difficult to construct one of these antennas without uh, some sort of uh, device to hold it in place while you solder. So I just wanted to show you here that I've now got this one soldered on, this uh, the bottom leg of the clover element here on the first one and this here is what we measured off precisely if you remember at 13.23 millimeters make sure that you've got that butted up right against that um, center isolator there because if you don't and you've got it a little bit out then it's going to extend your uh, measurement and your wavelength here so uh, it's, it's going to be out it's not going to be working at, at uh, 5.8 gigahertz so make sure you've got it buttered right up against that uh, center conductor there so hopefully you can see here that uh, I haven't soldered on the actual top parts of the elements yet to the signal wire I've just uh, arranged them all so they're all just touching the actual signal wire there and what I'm going to do now is go in and add a little bit of solder there so they're all, all three of them are connected but before you do that as well what you want to do is once you've got your bottom legs soldered on is just um, make sure that you've got all three elements nice and uniform and what you want to uh, remember as well when you're soldering the top legs onto the center element is not keep your soldering iron on longer than what you have to because the heat will travel down here and end up desoldering it from the bottom So hopefully you can see there, all three are soldered on. And what I'm going to do now is just trim this away. So I'm now ready to fit the cover on and actually glue it in place to uh, protect our elements. But um, before I actually glue this base on, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of epoxy here on the top of the antenna and actually glue it to this case here and the reason I'm doing that because what it'll do is add some strain relief here so a little bit of epoxy glue it in place there first so now that's glued in place there what I'm going to do is put a little bit of epoxy around the edge of this and then glue those two together so it's virtually finished I mean uh, all I'm going to do now is trim away this excess with a knife just get a little bit of um, emery paper and rough up the plastic here 
so uh, we can actually uh, put some paint on it but uh, it's come out rather well so here is the clover leaf antenna all finished off and uh, it's come out rather well I'm really pleased how that one turned out and here's all three antennas that I'm going to be shipping off to uh, my friend for his first person view so hope you enjoyed that video and uh, the other two previously and if you did please give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you for the next one